Thank you for tuning into this week's message from Lifehouse Fellowship Church in Midland, Texas. You may email us at info at lifehousefellowship.net. Now, here is Pastor Jeremy Sutton. Glad to be in the house of God today. Praise God. I'm so, man, I'm looking out. I'm missing faces seeing y'all. It's so good to see each and every one of you. Thank you for being here today. How many would y'all say today, no fear here? All three of you. Say it again. Say it one more time. No, there's no fear here. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but one of power. That word power there is authority. That word power there is authority and dominion that God has given to you. He hasn't given you one of a, 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 a weak spirit. No, that's not who our God is. No. <laughs> He's given you one of power, love, and a sound mind. You know, in this season, we have to be people who are sound. We have to be sound. You know, uh, uh, we've, been, we've been on a, an audio upgrade. And uh, we upgraded our systems. <clears throat> when we, what, what the Lord laid on our hearts is when we move into our new building, we don't need to be moving into a whole bunch of brand new stuff. So we're going to, our systems and structures are in place. And so we've upgraded our audio. And uh, next will be our video systems we're going to be adding to. Um, just, to just to, you know, we're constantly being. In, in, in flux, moving toward the thing that God has for us. And um, the team, we've been working our biscuits off. They, they have spent nights and days and hours upon hours putting in this new system to try to get it to sound right. How many of you know if it doesn't sound right, it can affect how the person hears? You know, today, about four songs in, John finally turned on the bass, the subs, because he's learning a new system. But, and I could tell, I was like, I, I texted him, I said, it's too high. We got to fix the EQ. What's going on? Yeah, you know, that's, that's me. And so uh, they sent me back, oh, we forgot to hit this button. Do you know that? You have to make sure your soundness is correct because if you're not sound in areas, you'll be harsh. If you're not sound as a, as a Christ follower, as a believer of the Christ, as, as, as a believer of his word, that when you go to speak, you'll be, eh, you'll be like nails on the chalkboard if you're not sound. Well, that's good preaching right there. And so God has not given you a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. Turn over your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I'm going to set this up, I'm, and I need you to be a quick hearer today. <clears throat> a quick hearer. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Here Paul is, he's kind of in this place where he's talking to the church of Corinth, and he's saying, man, I've gone through some stuff that if I can go through it, you can go through it. And so he's encouraging the body. He's encouraging the church to go, to go for it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I, I, let, me, let me start verse 1. Therefore, since we have ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. Say, do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling uh, the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation, the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. How many of you know that's an agenda of the enemy to blind the, the people of God? Someone say amen. Okay. 
So he wants to blind your mind. He wants to blind your eyes. He wants to blind your thought life. He wants to keep you from really seeing. He has blinded those minds who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is of the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In verse 8, and I love this scripture, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despair. How many of y'all would say that's been me? That should be every believer. We've been pressed, but my goodness, what came out of me was the glory. I've been pressed, but what came out of me was faith. I've been pressed, but what came out of me was love. I didn't fret. I didn't worry. I didn't get in fear. No, I stayed in faith. I stayed, in the, I stayed under the spot where the glory came out. And let me tell you, people, when I walked into the room, the atmosphere changed. Instead of it affecting me, I affected it. How many of y'all would say that's you? Come on, somebody. That's Paul. And he's saying, man, I'm, I'm so glad y'all are filling up these middle sections here. I'm, I get to talk to you guys. This is Paul, and he's saying, you know what? I've been pressed. I've been perplexed. I've been crushed, but I'm not in despair. I've been persecuted but I'm not forsaken. I've been struck down, but I'm not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. He wants to manifest himself in you. So when you show up, guess who shows up with you? Jesus does. When you're being pressed, guess who comes out of you? Jesus does. That's why we have to stay in faith. That's why we have to stay in his word. You put the word in you when you don't need it, the word will be there for you when you do need it. All right? For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that means what, he, what Paul is saying here, we're going to go through test troubles and trials. There's going to be some hard times, but we're going to make it. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're going to make it. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, underline that. The same spirit of faith. Paul is saying to the church of Corinth, and since I've not only experienced this, but you've experienced this, and we have come out on the other side, and we have the same spirit of faith. We have the same spirit of faith. According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. Oh, I'm going to tell you what has come out of your mouth in this season. Come on, somebody. I can tell a whole lot about you by just being quiet. And you can tell a whole lot about you by listening to the words that come out of your mouth. Today I want to minister a message, and I'm going to be quick about it, called Seeing is Believing. Seeing is Believing. Hebrews eleven six. 6, for the sake of time, I'm just going to kind of just go right on through here. It says, to please God, we must live by faith. 
We must believe that he is God, and we must believe that he is a rewarder. Say a rewarder. Of those who diligently seek him. You know, someone that is seeking God and, and seeking out his word and seeking his way of doing things, you know, that's a person that's seeking out relationship. That's someone who's seeking out Wanting to be in the presence of God. Seeking out his ways and doing it his way. That's a person who is in pursuit of relationship. You know, it's easy to walk by faith when everything is blue skies, butterflies, and rainbows. But it's, but it's in a season of transition. It's in a season of difficulty that it takes faith to get us through. How does faith come to a believer? How does faith come to a Christ follower? Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Now I can just sit here and hear and listen and hear and listen, hear and listen. But when I hear the word, it must become revelation to my life because it's the revealed word of God that brings hope in my heart that takes me to a place of revelation, of manifestation, and takes me to my destination. By hearing the truth, by hearing God's word, it becomes, faith comes that way. You know, when I get into God's word and I begin to hear his word and I begin to dig in his word, that's when faith begins to arise. That's when faith begins to be, become built and it becomes a strong foundation because it's truth. It's truth. When, when the word of God is preached, it's truth. Come on, somebody. Some would say Jesus is truth. It's truth that causes your spiritual life to become bigger than your human life. I'm going to say that again. It's truth that causes your spiritual life to become bigger than your human life. It's truth that feeds your spirit. It is hearing truth that causes your faith, expectation, and anticipation to rise and to grow. If the spiritual force of faith comes by hearing the word of God from a heavenly dimension, let me tell you, that's truth being imparted into your life and in your heart, and you can't stay the same. What does the devil want to put a halt to in your life? He wants, to, he wants you and I to live from a human, flesh, earthly thinking instead of a spirit, heavenly perspective. You are a... This is going to be my next message. You are a human being... having a spiritual experience. And many people think, well, I'm a human being having a human experience. And God say, nope, I've created you a little bit differently. When you, when you ask me to come into your heart, now I, you come from a higher dimension. You're going to a higher level. Am I helping anybody here? So no longer can you stay down here amongst the beggarly elements of the earth. You know, you're rising higher. Say, I'm rising higher. When we think and approach life from a spiritual perspective, you and I will walk in dominion and authority. And when you and I are walking in dominion and authority, we can now help others. The devil is after your awareness that you are a spiritual being he is after your faith because it is impossible to please God without faith he knows it's dangerous to him and his kingdom so what does he try to do he tries to keep you one of two things busy or idle so we've discovered last week we talked about for the believer faith is not optional 
When you obey God, you obey his word. And when you obey his word, truth comes alive. And when truth comes alive, man, the Bible says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And when, when you are seeking after him, faith is inevitable. So faith will be tested. Amen? Your faith is going to be tested. How many of your faith has been tested in this season? No, if we're all honest, I think we could raise our hands, our feet, our toes. Our faith has been tested. So when your surroundings contradict the word, what will you believe? When the circumstance of lack and, 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 and sickness and, and, and fear contradict what God says about you, the believer, will you continue to have faith? Will you continue to believe? When your emotions and your feelings don't line up with the word of God, I'm asking today, what will you believe? Will you continue to believe his word? You know, we as Americans have had it pretty good. I know it's been, I know for some, it's, it's, it, it's, it's been a challenge. But for the most part, my life's been good. Now, with a little bit of pressure, how do I respond? With a little bit of testing, how am I going to navigate? The the way we win is by being people of faith. Faith trumps fear. Faith trumps lack. Faith trumps worry. Faith trumps whatever emotion you're dealing with. So for all those people in Hebrews chapter 11, what is Hebrews chapter 11 called? It's called the hall of faith. There's a lot of people in the hall of faith. But what made them, what made them that? They were tested. They went through the fire They went through troubles and tests and trials. They came out on the other side in faith. Someone says, well, where you at? Well, I was a little weak in my faith. Someone said, well, where are you at now? I said, I'm still in faith. It may have wavered. It may have waned. I may have gotten weak in my faith, but I'm still in faith. Let's keep on. All the people in Hebrews chapter 11, they lived by faith. That's why they're qualified to be in that chapter, the hall of faith. This is what these people believed. They believed despite what was happening around them, despite what they heard Despite what they saw, despite what they felt, they all had life and death issues. But by faith, Noah built the ark. By faith, Abraham sacrificed. By faith, Enoch was and he was not. By faith, Moses, come on somebody. He gave us a living example So, so of these people that please God. They believed Say this with me. I believe. Say, I expect. I anticipate that God is helping me and answering me in this season. You see, these people in the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, they knew who their God was. And in spite of the circumstance, and in spite of the test, the trouble, and the trial, they knew that God would deliver them. And I ask you today, do you believe God will deliver you? Do you believe he's a healer? Do you believe he's a protector? Do you believe he's someone that, that when, the, when the going gets tough, he's, gonna, he's not going to bail you, but he's going to stay close by your side because he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother? Do you believe it? 
Faith says, I believe. Even whenever the, the, what, what's going on outwardly may not look like it, but faith says, I believe. I brought a few things up here. I hope I get to go up to it. Talk about it here in a minute. Hebrews 11.1 1 is the Bible definition of faith. Okay? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Say, not seen. Every day we need to jack our faith up. We need to pump it up. Pump up the jam. Pump it up. Pump it up. I took us way back, Mr. Terry. Way back. Every day we need to jack our faith up. We need to pump our faith up. Because circumstances and people will try to rob you of your faith. So what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Underline substance in your Bible. Faith is the substance. That word substance there means foundation. That which I stand under, the foundation. For instance, the stru- this structure is built on a foundation. And this structure is only as good as the foundation it's built upon. Okay? So faith is what? Faith is the foundation for things hoped for. Faith is your foundation. Other translations say, faith is my confidence. Faith is my assurance. So faith is the foundation that hope stands on. No faith, no hope. You hearing me? I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. Both of these spiritual forces are unseen. Confidence and assurance, faith, hope, you can't see it. But I'm going to show you how to apply it in your life. You know, when we pray over our kids and when we pray over our our family, when we pray over you as partners here at Lifehouse Fellowship Church, we, we we are building this foundation of faith, this foundation of confidence and assurance. The, and, and when I pray, I'm believing that I'm going to see my prayers answered. Okay? And so the foundation also comes from us as parents. As, you know, my children, they didn't know where the food was going to come. But I guarantee you they showed up when Tanya said, it's time to eat. They knew when they went to school that when they opened their lunchbox, there was going to be food in the lunchbox. They knew that if they needed anything, and it was within our hands we could do it, that we was going to make it happen. Now I ask this question, do you believe that's the heart of the Father for you? Do you believe that? That God wants the best for you. Do you believe today that he's a good father? He's a loving father. He's a caring father. And he wants the best for you and he'll do better for you than you could do for yourself. See, foundation is being built every time we hear the truth. And as you know that, you put your confidence assurance in who God is. And that is building the structure. Because your foundation is right. The structure will be right. Faith can change circumstances. Faith will change your relationship with God. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What is the Bible definition of hope? Hope is not wishing. I'm moving here. Stick with me. I'm getting us there. Hope is not wishing. I wish we could have that. I sure hope so. No, 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 no. What are they saying? I know God can, but I'm not counting on it. When you hear people say, I don't know, maybe. 
I sure hope so. What are they saying? I'm not going to say yes because just in case God says no. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they mince words. Hope means this. You ready? Hope means anticipation. Hope means confident expectation. Hope means joyful, confident expectation. You believe that? Do you? You believe that baby's going to be okay? Do you? You've been challenged on that, haven't you? You've been challenged in your words, haven't you? But you can have hope. Why? Because the word says it. So get joyful about it. Quit speaking it. Speak life. I go down the road with every one of you. Quit speaking death. Don't allow fear, doubt, and worry out of your mouth. Well, COVID's going to kill me. Okay, if that's your confession, you can have it like you say it. But my confident expectation is in the word that Jesus gave me that I will live and not die. I will fulfill every plan. I will fulfill every assignment that God has put on my life. And the devil can't take me until my time is done. Hope, anticipating, confident expectation, joyful, confident expectation. Am I helping anybody? Point number two, if you're living by faith, you're anticipating. While I've walked with God and have endeavored to walk by faith, this is one of the most helpful things that I've personally grabbed hold of about faith and hope. And you can sum it up with this, anticipation. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been challenged. This year has challenged me spiritually in my faith walk like never before. But I'm starting to see my anticipation start changing again. Where the enemy in this season, we had to punch, punch the brakes and we all came to a screeching halt. Am I the only one that ever felt that way? Everybody feel like that. Like life kind of stopped. kind of depleted my faith. But there's a shifting. You can't keep a good man down. You can't keep a good woman down. The Bible says a thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Why does it not come nigh you? Why? Why did it come to the ten thousand and the thousand? But it didn't come nigh you. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about Psalm 23? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Death is going to come to everyone. But why, why will I not see death? Have you ever thought about it? This is the promise of the believer. That you'll live long and fulfill every, you'll fulfill all your days. I, I feel this some kickback. Let me stay here for just a minute. The word is either true or it's not. 
I can't take parts of the word and say, that's not for me. And then take part of it and say, well, I'll take that. It's either all or nothing. It's all or nothing. I have to live in faith. I have to believe every word that comes out of this scripture. And I have to believe that it was God breathed, God ordained for me to live my life today. I'll tell you what's happened in this season. Pressure's been applied, and some of you don't like what has come out of you. Where's faith been? I think, you know, if anything, be, be, you know, you, you, it's revealed who you are. It reveals where you're at, and that's okay. I've been tried by fire. But I'm coming out purified gold. I've been tried. Come on, somebody. I've gone through the heat. I've gone through the pressure. I'm coming out and all the junk is being burned off. And I'm going to stand before the king holy. Because it all was burned away through the fire. There have been things exposed in my life in this season that I didn't know was there. But it's there. And I've said, God, what do I do with this? And he's helped me. Because that's who he is and that's what he does. Ladies and gentlemen, I, for the sake of time, I, I, I've got to finish this thing. Your faith is hanging on your anticipation. You can't see it. You can't feel it. Maybe there's things that God has told you is going to come to pass. But it's still in the unseen realm. You know, we're building a building soon. We bought land. Paid for. We was moving for breaking ground and then this whole thing hit. It's like, ah. Didn't want to let the cat out of the bag so soon. But you know how I attach my faith from the unseen realm to the seen realm? So I go by the land and I picked up some dirt. And I pray over this dirt. It takes the unseen realm and gives me something tangible. Then I've got a card somewhere in here. I've grabbed the wrong one. And we got them in the back. And it's a picture of our new building. And on the back of it has all these prayer scriptures we're praying over our new facility. So I'm taking the unseen realm, connecting my faith with the seen realm, and then I'm going to see the manifestation of the prayers that I pray. And this is my faith project. So I'm taking, so I drive by that piece of property. And I, when I'm praying over this, I drive by the piece of property, and I see the building now. I didn't see it at first, but when my, my spiritual eyes, I see it. I see the drives. I, I see our walkway around the place. I see our outdoor baptism. I see our lawn where we can have outdoor concerts. Walk into the foyer, like see to the left, all the children's rooms. 
in youth. I can see myself walking down the hall, going to our offices to the right, our cafe. Then I see myself in the sanctuary. It's beautiful. How do you know it's beautiful? Because I've seen it. I've taken the unseen realm, applying my faith to something tangible, then this will produce a manifestation. Ladies and gentlemen, what, are, what is your faith project? I know what mine is. I've, I've got several. We, me and Tanya Jane, we've got several faith projects. We just saw a manifestation yesterday. Something we've been believing God for for a very long time. I stand before you as a person that is compelling you to be lived, to, to live by faith and not be led by fear. Faith is the foundation of persuasion that expectation is built upon. I'm persuaded. Not because Jeremy says so. But I'm reminded of the word that says, He who began a good work in me will be faithful to complete it. And I'm confident of that very thing that God's going to finish what He started. What is it in your life that fear, doubt, and worry, test troubles, and trials have come in? try to keep you from entering into your fullness. Today, COVID's defeated. Today, lack is defeated. Today, strife is coming under our feet. I speak healing to our nation today. I speak new hope that it would arise and there would be a great harvest of souls throughout our nation. Where sin abounds, grace there much more. And we're going to see the King of kings and the Lord of lords have his way. Well, if God's, you know, if, if God doesn't judge America, then he's going to have to repent to Sodom and Gomorrah. And I heard that this week, and I, heard, and I said, that is a lie from the pit. How many of y'all have ever heard that statement? Okay, now you have. Do you know that America gives more to missions than any other country in this world? Do you know we send out more missionaries from this nation that are going into all the world to preach the gospel? Do you also know we bless Israel more than any other nation? And because we honor the word. I know there's people, I know there's, I know there's a voice rising in this nation. Don't buy the lie. Don't buy fear. Stay the course. Keep your eyes on Jesus and know that God's got something big planned. I said it from the very foundations, from the very beginning. Satan always overplays his hand. But Jesus has an ace up his sleeve. I'm telling you, it ain't over until it's over. And it ain't over yet. And if you and I will stay in faith, we'll see this thing. Lifted high and great peace rest upon me. Father, I thank you right now. Just pray.
pray for peace. I just pray peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. Robo Sahati Bush. I pray peace now in the name of Jesus. I speak peace now in the name of Jesus. That, that they, would, they would know and they, that they would leave here knowing that you're with them. And that great anticipation and expectation would begin to arise and joy would begin to flood their souls. And, and Father, that we would affect our country, that we would affect our cities, we would affect our, uh, our, our, our families, Father God. And we would know that, that if you have begun the work, you will finish the work. And you're not leaving us, forsaking us. You're with us now, even till the very end. My God, my God, may we not lose heart. My God, my God, may we not lose sight of who you are. Father, I love you. We love you. I just pray peace now. I pray faith would arise. In Jesus' mighty name. So just receive that right there. I see it right now by the Spirit. He's turning your mourning into dancing. He's turning your sorrow into joy. Right now, I just sense it by my spirit. You're going to wake up with just a joy in your heart like you never have before. And just go ahead and express that joy with no one around. You can do it in your bedroom. You can do it wherever. But just begin to dance before the Lord. David said, I'll become even more undignified in this. But this sign of dancing is a sign of freedom. And I just see you dancing. I just see, yes, you men, just shut the door to your bedroom and just dance before the Lord. It's just a sign of a freedom. It's an expression of joy. It's an expression, of a step of faith saying, God, I trust you. <laughs> it's a challenge, but you can do it. stand and raise our hands to heaven. We hope you were blessed by this message from Pastor Jeremy Sutton. If you need prayer or have questions, please email info at lifehousefellowship.net. You can also visit our website at lifehousefellowship.net for more information about our church or to connect to the family at Lifehouse Fellowship.